follow along in this video to see how I painted up this one battalion of Highlanders for Warlord Games Epic Battles Waterloo. The regiment that I'm working on specifically is the 79th Regiment of Foot Cameron Highlanders. They fought in the British 5th Division 8th Brigade in the Battle of Quatre Bras. For my uniform reference, I went to my favorite website for the Waterloo era, which I will be showing on the screen right now. From the Rifleman and Highlanders kit, you're going to be using these figures right here. You'll want to keep all these figures on the sprue, but cut out these sprue runners right next to the shoulders, so when you paint them, they won't mar the paint job that you do right on the shoulder area. Also cut off the sprue runner for these two flag poles right here because they will also get in the way of your painting. Next, you'll want to prime and base coat the models. I start with a white primer, but you actually could use a red spray paint like Krylon or something similar, but I decided to use it this way. There's really no wrong way to do it. You can either do it one of two ways. You can apply the primer onto the models. A light dusting is fine. It just gives the oncoming paint something to hold on to. And then after that, I mix 50-50 Flow Improver with Pure Red fanatic paints from army painter and then i paint all the models red the reason why is that these models are predominantly red and painting them all red will truly cut down on your time to finish off this battalion once that coat of red paint is dry go ahead and use barbarian flesh fanatic paints and you're going to be putting this on all the faces of all the soldiers and also on all your hands Note that the back of the models also have exposed hands, so pick those out and paint those in Barbarian Flesh. Next, we are also going to be painting the exposed knees on all these models. These Scottish Highlanders wore kilts, which no other soldier actually wore. It is very unique and it was a signature for the Highlanders. The officers and the flag bearers actually wore the grey pants of the British Army, so you will not be painting those in the flesh color. Next, I'm going to switch to leather brown paint and I'm going to be applying it first onto the flag poles. Be sure to paint the front and the back. Next, we're going to be painting all the muskets brown. Now, at this point, you don't have to worry about which parts of the musket are brown or silver. Just go ahead and paint the whole thing brown. It'll just make it easier in the next steps and I'll show you. While painting the muskets, don't forget that they have a back side as well, so paint that. While I have some leather brown on my brush, I go ahead and paint some of the heads at random with brown hair. Afterwards, I can put different colors of hair just to randomize the models. Next, I change the ash gray fanatic paints, and I'm going to be using this on the trousers of the commanding officer, as well as the two flag bearers. Again, when you do the front, you'll also want to turn the model around and do the back. Next, we're going to use the same ash gray and turn the models to the back and paint all these bedrolls on the top of all the knapsacks. The only models that do not have knapsacks are the commanding officer and the two flag bearers. You want to leave those as is and just paint the rest. When painting the bedrolls, note that there are going to be some visible bedrolls peeking out to the front of the models as well. They're going to be above the shoulder on the side that doesn't have the musket, so make sure you put some color on those. Next, I switch to Angel Green Fanatic Paint. This is a darker green color and I'm going to be applying it onto all the kilts on the models. I also use this darker green on all the gaiters, which kind of look like tall socks on all the models. Now, don't worry about being too fine with this. Even if you do get into the shoe area or into the top of the gaiters, it's fine. You will be coming back with other colors later and it'll just paint right over them. And as usual, always note that there is always a front side and a back side to all these models. So whatever you do in the front, go ahead and turn them around and do it on the back as well. Going back to the commander model and the two flag bearers, they have gray pants. So you don't have to paint their kilt screen. They don't have kilts. So just paint the models around them, leave those guys in gray. Also note that they do not have gaiters, so you don't have to paint those green. Note that these British Highlanders had light infantry or skirmishers. You want to pick two stands, pick about four or five models on those stands and paint their plumes 
green, the same angel green that I used earlier. Paint about four or five of them. Per stand, you want to do this on two stands. The rest of them are going to have white plumes. Now, coming back to the commanding officer, the center of his tunic is going to be in dark green. So you want to paint the same angel green on this area like I'm showing here. For the Cameron Highlanders, their cuffs are going to be dark green as well. So use angel green and paint those areas. When putting this dark green on the back of the models, look for the exposed flesh hands. Whenever you see an exposed hand, it usually has an exposed cuff. You'll want to paint those green. The collars for the Highlanders are also green, so go ahead and use a fine detailing brush right underneath the neck area and put a swatch of green in that area. For a vast majority of these models, the backs of these do not have any exposed collars as you can see here, but the commander and the two flag bearers do have exposed collars, so make sure to paint those. I next use Green Skin Fanatic Paints, and I'm going to be painting this onto the tunic of the musician. The Cameron Highlanders musicians had light green tunics, so this is the one and only model that gets a unique colored tunic. Next for the bagpipes, this usually was covered with a tartan cloth, but I decided to use crystal blue, which is a lighter blue, just to kind of highlight the uniqueness of this instrument in this unit. No other unit beside the Highlanders use bagpipes in the Napoleonic Wars, and I use this color just to kind of draw your eyes towards it. Next, I use matte white fanatic paint and a small detailing brush, and I apply it onto all the cross straps on all these models. Besides the cross straps, I also paint all the backpack straps with this color as well. And then I use the same matte white color to paint the plumes on each soldier's hats. Note that the commanding officer and the two flag bearers do not get white straps, so just leave them for now. The musician does get white straps, paint him like all the rest of the soldiers. Also paint all the pipes on his bagpipe with this color. Paint the whole pipe white. Later on, we'll come back with black to accent it. Going back to the front of the models, there's going to be a white horizontal strap that braces the two straps on the backpack together. You want to paint a horizontal white line across this area. The braids that go horizontally across all the tunics also get painted white. Next, I switch to matte black paint, and the first area that I paint are going to be all the knapsacks behind each of the models. Again, all the models usually have knapsacks. The only ones that do not are the commanding officer and the two flag bearers. The hats on these Highlanders also get black. Just be sure to not paint over the plumes that you had painted green or white earlier on. The caps have a front and a back, so make sure to paint both sides. Next, you'll want to paint all the shoes black. So when you're doing this, don't worry about painting black onto the bases. They're going to be flocked over with flocking later. So you can be fairly loose when you do this. It's okay if it gets a little bit messy, it'll be covered up later. For the officer and the flag bearers, all their straps are black. So you're going to be using the same color and just applying it onto all their straps. And when you're doing this, you'll want to flip it around and make sure that you do the straps on the backs of them as well. For the musician, the pipes on the backpipe are mainly black with white trimmings. So you'll be applying this black carefully and leaving some white in between the larger areas of black. Next, I'm going to be using pure red fanatic paints and I'm going to be painting it on the tartan area of all the caps. This is namely above the brow of the head, in between the black area of the cap and the soldier's head. I also apply this red onto the tops of all the gaiters just below the knees. There's going to be a strap of red there, which is going to end up being the tartan in this area later on. 
I also apply this red onto the cuffs of the musician. He's the only one that actually has red cuffs. I next use demonic yellow fanatic paints and I'm going to be applying this under the epaulettes of the leader and the two flag bearers. These go on the shoulder area, they're very small areas so you'll just have to look out for them and pick those areas out and apply the yellow onto them. This yellow can also act as a variety for hair color. You can apply some of this yellow onto some of the models to kind of vary them, make them look different. Now I use oak brown fanatic paints and I paint the rest of the exposed hairs on the backs of the models with this darker brown color. Now it's time to lay down some silver. I use plate mill metal fanatic metallic paints from Army Painter and I apply it onto all the muskets. On the front, the silver is going to start at the top of the bayonet and it's going to go two thirds of the way down the musket. And then on the back of the models, you're going to be only applying it onto the bayonet area. And the rest of it, below the bayonet, you want to leave it brown because that's actually the stock of the musket, which is made out of wood. You'll want to next apply the silver onto the spontoon, which is the spear of the sergeant. And then also apply the silver onto the sword of the commanding officer. The three models over here also have scabbards on their hips. You'll want to paint those silver as well. On the back of the models, some of the soldiers actually have plates that they strap onto their backpacks. Paint those silver. I next use greedy gold metallic paint. This is going to go on the heads of each of the flag poles. And I also apply this gold onto the hilt and pommel of the officer's sword. Before I put washes on these models, these two over here are going to want to be able to stand upright. So I'm going to go ahead and clip them off and then I will be gluing them onto their bases. Now I'm only going to be gluing them onto the back of the base like this. This is going to make it easier once we apply the washes. I will show you in a little bit. Next, what I'm going to do is mix 60% of dark tone with water. So 60% dark tone, 40% water. I've pre-mixed some of it over here. And then I just liberally apply this wash all over the models. Because it's watered down, it will settle into the recesses without overly staining or darkening the models. And also, the reason why I wanted all of these to stand upright is that this wash is just going to seep down onto the legs of the models. And you really kind of want them to be standing upright so that the excess wash actually goes down onto the base and not onto the head or the body of the model. As it's drying, the ones on the bases are already upright. For the rest of them, just kind of prop it up like this with some bottles. Now let's paint some tartans. You're going to be using that matte white and then a sharp tip of a toothpick and then just kind of pick up four dots, white dots on each of the strap areas, the red strap areas on each of the caps like this. This is an abbreviation of the tartan that is shown here in this picture. On the back of the caps, only two white spots are usually needed on each cap. Next, you'll want to repeat this process for all the tops of the gaiters. They're also going to be a tartan pattern in this area, like I'm showing here in this picture. And you're just going to go ahead and apply about two dots per gaiter as you go across the models. Next, I use a fine detailing brush to apply these stripes on all the cuffs of the models. These areas are fairly small, so you can abbreviate each cuff with about one or two stripes maximum, or else it'll look a little bit too white and too busy. I next use wild green fanatic paints for the tartan on the kilts. Using a fine detailing brush, first apply some vertical stripes up and down on all the kilts. You'll be applying about two to three stripes per kilt. And you want to just go across the models and apply all the vertical stripes first. And then after that, come back and apply some horizontal stripes. There's usually room for about two or three stripes per kilt. And just go ahead and do it on all the models that have kilts on. For the backs of the models, the area is a little bit smaller. So it usually takes about two vertical stripes and two horizontal stripes for each kilt. 
And once you're done, you're going to have a very convincing looking tartan pattern on all these tiny epic scale models. At this point, all your painting is done, so go ahead and clip off all your models from the sprue and then use plastic glue or super glue and apply them onto all your bases. Remember those two stands that had light infantry on them that had the green plumes? Go ahead and put both those stands on a single base like this. Everything else can be base as you like, but for the leader stands, you want to make sure that you put them in front of the base like this. I use the simple flocking treatments for these tiny models. I use green flocking and then some Elmer's glue or white glue. I apply it onto the base with an old brush and then I apply the flocking right on top of the Elmer's glue and it sticks in place. And it looks pretty cool for something small like this. For the flags, I look at the flag sheet for the 79th regiment of foot and then cut them out with the scissors. I fold it in half, apply some Elmer's glue on the inside and then thread it around the flagpole like this. And then as it is drying, you can actually induce some fluttering like this by just crinkling the paper. And then it looks like it's fluttering in the wind. Do the same thing for the other flag. And these are basically all set. Protect your work with one or two coats of matte clear varnish. And at this point, you are done. Here are the 79th Regiment of Foot Cameron Highlanders ready for a game of Epic Battles Waterloo on the tabletop. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video helps you get your British Army onto the tabletop faster. Until the next time, happy hobbying and I will see you in my next video.